What comes to mind when I say the name Carmen San Diego? Is it the old DOS game? Or is it the old PBS game show? How about the Saturday morning cartoon? Or the Netflix series? Any way you slice it, that name is as relevant as Minecraft and Call of Duty. But when did it start? And how did it get to the point that a simple little educational game from 1985 became a household name? In today's episode of Retrodox, we're going to talk about where in the world is Carmen San Diego, the game, and beyond. Let's go back in time to the year 1985, when a small little company known as Broderbund and one of their developers by the name of Dane Bigham wanted to try his hand at creating a text-based game similar to Colossal Cave Adventure. But instead of using text-based interface, he wanted to create a menu-driven game instead and to be played on the Apple II. The basic concept is going to be a game where the player would chase down criminals, but Border Run's founder, Greg Carlson, had the idea to make it more geographical-based, and to have the game ship with a world almanac so the player could use it for research while playing the game. However, Big Ham was not initially thrilled by the concept, so he just wanted to focus more on the interface. Well, Greg hired David Sikafin to write the story. He started creating various criminal personas, as well as the game's main villain, Carmen Sandiego, and he wanted to make her a female to attract new females to play the game as well. So with all that, it was expected to have all the villains work for an organization known as VILE, which stood for Villains International League of Evil. And the player was working for the Acme Detective Agency as a recruit, chasing down each member of VILE using geographical clues working the way up to going after Carmen herself. The game became a massive hit on the educational market and was used in classrooms all over the world from 1986 to 1989. Bergerman then followed the first game with Where in the U.S. is Carmen San Diego, followed by Where in Time, followed by Where in Space, and followed by Junior Detective. Soon Carmen San Diego made her way to TV three times. From 1991 to 1996, PBS aired the game show Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, where contestants played the role of an acting recruit and were asked questions as they chased vile henchmen and ultimately into the final round chased down Carmen herself. It did have a short-lived sequel focusing on periods in time, but was ultimately cancelled with the reason being that the premise had run its course. Fox then had aired the animated series Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego from 1996 to 1999, which had two main characters who were tasked at trying to find and hunt down Carmen herself. Sadly, Broderbund soon no longer existed in 1998, but that was the end of Carmen since the learning company took over the franchise in 1998 to the present day, and starred Lynn Sigpin as the chief and Greg Lee as a special agent in training new recruits. But the show's most memorable component was the acapella group Rockapella, who sang the game's theme song. The game was made up of three rounds. Round one was a basic trivia segment where the players had to answer questions, and the two players with the highest score went on to the next round, where they had to get all the items needed to get the loot and warrant to arrest the henchmen. And the last round was where the winner of the second run was asked questions about the locations around the world and had to place flags in the correct spots on the floor-sized map of the world. And if they got all of them correct, they captured Carmen and was awarded a trip anywhere in the United States. PBS tried to follow this up with where in time was Carmen San Diego, with Thigpen reprising her role as the chief, but Kevin Schnick as Time Pilot Squadron Leader. The game was very similar to where in the world, however, the last round is where things changed. The last remaining player who advanced to the final round had to pass through a series of gates, then only open when the player answered a question relating to a period in time correctly. If they answered wrong, they had to do a task with a 90 second time limit to open the gate. After passing through all six gates, the player would capture Carmen and win a personal computer. 
Fox aired Where on Earth is Carmen San Diego. Following the adventures of Zack and his sister Ivy, were two teenage agents led by the chief, a Max Hedrum like entity, in their effort to stop Carmen and her henchmen from stealing artifacts around the world. Netflix in 2019 produced another animated series titled Carmen San Diego, where Carmen was neither a hero or a villain, but was hired by Vile in the early stages but soon turned against them to stop them once and for all. Soon the franchise brushed out in other forms such as books, comic books, and board games. However, in the 90s, the Oregon Zoo ran a summer long event titled Where in the Zoo is Carmen San Diego? where zoo patrons played gum shoes and hunted down actors portraying vile henchmen as well as the periodically an actor playing Carmen would appear. In 2016, NPR ran a series paying homage to WINWCS contest called Where in the Mall is Carmen San Diego, where people had to figure out what star Carmen and her henchmen were all at. It was part of a podcast called Ask Me Another. Their brand was licensed all over and in 2017, Yakima, Washington held a scavenger hunt called Where in the Valley is Carmen in San Diego? You can guess the premise what, for that. My final thoughts are this. Growing up playing this game as a kid was always fun. I had almost every PC version of the game that I could get my hands on. We're in the US, we're in the world, we're in time, and we're in space. The game has made learning fun, and now being an adult, I can see why they made their way into classrooms back in the day. As well as I love watching the old PBS game show and the animated series in Fox as well. I sadly never get a chance to see the Netflix series, but maybe I can still find it and I will review it someday. No, I never made it far enough into the game as a kid to finally get a chance to capture Carmen herself. Well, I have to head back to the X Men Detective Agency and retrain to find Carmen. So I'm Paul saying peace out and stay frosty. As a closing credits roll, I'd like to thank the, my loyal Patreons. And if you want to donate to Patreon, there will be links down in the description down below as always, along with a link to my merch shop as always, as well if you wish to support the channel in any way. Again, just a reminder, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, don't forget to hit that notification bell, and please leave me a big thumbs up and a comment down below. Again, I'm Paul saying peace out and stay frosty.